All right, guys, we are live. Welcome, everyone, to uh, the September 2016 live sale. It's currently 2 p.m., so if you guys are watching and it's not 2 p.m. Eastern, um, it looks like you guys are catching us on the rebroadcast. So it won't be possible for you to participate live to the to the chat and all that. But as far as um, if you wanted to purchase us the actual live show items, you can still do so for at least in the next few days. Uh, we always say that um, it's going to be like about 72 hours on average, but it goes for a little bit longer than that, sometimes as late as Wednesday of the following week. So there's plenty of opportunities to, to pick and choose from the items that remain after the live portion. So um, right as we get started here, um, there is some Patreon stuff to cover. Um, thank you guys so much for your, uh, your Patreon donations. What? What's up? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you guys can talk. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, these guys are... So, actually, I might as well say, uh, with me I have here Michael and Luke. So, uh, Michael right now is on the camera, and Luke is going to be helping moderate chat. So, I, you know, last, uh, last live show was, I think, the first one where nobody got banned. I was kind of surprised. So let's see here. Um, yeah, so the, the, the Patreon folks. The list is actually growing slowly. So we, um, we got a few uh, like $1 uh, donors and um, another donor that, uh, that went over the $5 mark. So Jason gets uh, a shout out. So thank you very much, Jason. And it uh, looks like we have some, some longer term guys, Jeff, Luis, Nate, and Phil. Uh, again, thank you guys so much. I'm actually going to be giving you guys shout outs as well on the um, on like the raw vlogs. The last uh, video that I posted was uh, a live, well it's not like, well, it wasn't live. It was just kind of like a, a more informal, uh, more like a, just a, a test of my vlogging rig. But those are going to be, um, yeah, kind of like just informal content where we cover just some, some random ideas that is happening that day. Anyways, I hope you like that stuff. And I'll probably be giving these guys more, uh, more attention during those. Uh, let's see. I know that some folks uh, are new, and I should go over how exactly a live sale works. It basically lives on both Tidal Gardens as well as um, YouTube. So in order to purchase corals, you have to go to tidalgardens.com, um, and you can see the, uh, the live sale if you look at the, the top left navigation, there's like a blinking red dot that says live sale. Click into that, you'll see um, an embedded video, probably of this. Um, actually, now that I think of it, it's not going to be embedded of this because I messed up. So let me fix that real quick. Uh, it is right now pointing to the previous live sale. Um, but the items will appear below it. Let's see here, manage. There's like a million moving parts to these live shows, so it does not surprise me that I done goofed already. And I'm already getting behind in reading chat, so hopefully you guys are behaving. <laughs> All right, give me one second here. Uh, Okay, so I'm trying to try to multitask here poorly. Save. Okay. Hopefully that did it. Let's test that out. So if yeah, if you're on TitleGardens.com now, it should be fingers crossed pointed to the correct video stream, which is me live. Um, in order to purchase corals, you actually have to check out with the item. Somebody on YouTube had that question early, like, what if two people check out at the same time? They would literally have to check out at exactly the same time, because the first person that actually checks out is going to get that coral. So a lot of folks, um, what they end up doing is, um, is purchasing corals as they go, at least during like, the live show portion. So some of the more in-demand stuff, it goes pretty quickly, so that's, that's a good practice to do. 
Um, as far as shipping, it's a flat rate $39.99, and it's only uh, U.S. Uh, shipping. Unfortunately, we don't offer any international, and uh, orders over $250 ship for free. There's always the option to, to pick up as well. So if you're local to Ohio and want to pick up, we can set up an appointment for you to come get your calls. Okay. Now that we have that out of the way, we have a little over 200 corals, and let's start. So the first guy up here is a bleeding apple scoli. We've had this guy on the show before. Uh, has not sold yet, and is still doing quite well. Okay, I'm just reading over chat here as well. Uh, any Zoas today? Yes, there will be. What is that exactly Patreon donations about? So Patreon is essentially um, a tip jar, more or less, for YouTube creators. So um, it's it's totally up to people that just want to contribute. I mean, the, honestly, you get very little for it. You get like shout outs and stuff like that. Um, and if we hit certain milestones, we do uh, something kind of like fun f during the programs and stuff like that. But it's just, you know, if, if people wanted to contribute to the program and, and help, um, you know, offset like the production costs, that's a good way to, to, to go about doing it. Um, like the lowest uh, tier is like $1. And typically, um, it's usually like per video, but I mean, we only usually um, do the thing like once a month. So, I mean, if you wanted to, to donate for once a month, that's, that's fine. And so um, if you go to patreon.com slash title gardens, you can kind of see what that's all about. And at the $5 mark, you get your name read. All right, Mark Andrews got my smoothie, ready to watch coral, there you go. Uh, what lighting grows though is the best? Um, from what I hear, it's metal halide. You probably don't like that answer, most people don't, but from what I understand, um, the, the people that have completely ridiculous, insane giant zoas that grow like crazy, it's done under metal halide. Uh, I like T5s, they're a bit pricey in the long run, correct. I also like T5s, and I think that if I, like going forward, we're probably gonna move to like 90 something percent T5, if we could. Does Reefroids work as well as they claim it does? Maybe, um, we don't really use it. Like we've had it before, um, we use a container or two. Um, I mean, it's like, it's like dried plankton. Um, for the most part, as far as like planktonic stuff, we have um, like um, frozen rotifers, and I can definitely tell that uh, corals really respond well to, to rotifers. So, if it's anything similar to that, maybe. Uh, hello, Than. Hello, Scott. I need one of these scolies. What's your favorite coral? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Probably something that I can propagate. <laughs> All right, so let's just move on. Uh, coral number two. This is an Australian elegance. Uh, will there be any Acanthastria hillae or Bower Banki in the sale? Yes, there will be. Uh, I don't have any corals right now, but I want some. I have a compact fluorescent, 36 watt, one blue, also 36 watt. That's probably enough to keep a lot of corals, believe it or not, Ryan. On my next tank, I'm getting an AP700. Is that the Kessel? I've seen those. They're pretty neat, if that's what that is. Do you know what that is? Is that a Kessel AP700? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's a Kessel. Did you finish picking out the corals at 2 a.m. last night? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, actually, um, let's move on to number three. The person that picks out the corals is Luke. <laughs> I've come completely uh, sent that task offshore. What would be your favorite morph of Zoa? Utter Chaos or Bowser's? Um, I like Fruit Loops and Rastas and stuff like that. So these are actually frags. So, um, oh. Also, this isn't a Scarlet and Graefavites, I don't think. Uh, the reason why there's like some confusion here is because I believe that number four. I'm sorry, that's number four. There is no number four. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's, okay, that, that makes sense. Okay, so number three, don't even worry about it. Because this guy here, number four, killed number three last night. And that can kind of happen. These, these corals are spaced only a few inches apart. 
And so he, actually right, right by my head, uh, right there, you can see some sweeper tentacles. They were uh, long enough to reach over and sting uh, what used to be number three. And uh, yeah, so I have to pour one out for like the dead homies around that one. Didn't make it. So yeah, please ignore number three. This guy's number four. Let's move on to number five. Yeah, and sometimes, uh, you know, people ask, do, you know, do LPS have aggression issues? And can you just keep all LPS together? Clearly, you cannot. Some, some reach out and grab and kill others. Okay. Do a little edit here so I can see more of the chat. What bulb mix do you think is best for uh, a six bulb setup? Uh, okay, let's go into number six real quick. For a six bulb setup. I happen to like, so I got a bunch of four bulb fixtures in, like super cheap from Amazon. They were literally $75, shipped two day, uh, that came with, you know, four yellow bulbs for plants. And I just said, I just had some ATIs laying around. And I happened to put in two Coral Plus and two Blue Plus. And I'm getting great results under that. I mean, I like the look of it. Um, it's not too blue, it's not too purple. And the, the corals that are in those tanks are doing really, really, really well. Like great coloration and great growth which would otherwise be sort of neglected. And before I had uh, a couple radions on there and I just swapped it out for like the cheapest T5 fixture I could find online. And so far so good. So if you have a six bulb setup, I mean, I'd probably go with something like that. I'm really happy with the Coral Plus and Blue Plus. All right, next up, number seven. So, and the thing is like people um, often talk about like the, the long-term costs of T5. And yeah, bulb replacement kind of sucks. The electrical consumption, not metal halide bad, but it's it's a lot. I mean, it's certainly going to be a lot more than LED. And the cost of just um, like the, the, the heat management issues. It's not, again, not as bad as metal halide, but it's, it's still going to be an issue, especially for smaller tanks. Um, what I've always suggested is, if you wanted the benefits of T5, but aren't really into like investing in a full T5 setup. Let's go to number eight. Um, you can just like run like a single strip for about four hours a day. And that's probably good enough to get all the benefits. This guy's a little bit dark, a little underexposed. So right now it's pretty sunny out, but I anticipate that we might have a total thunderstorm. If you caught our feed on any number of social media outlets like Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, whatever, there's, there's like this Tyrannosaurus shaped storm coming into Ohio and it was like crazy windy this morning and knowing Ohio weather, it can go from like bright and sunny like this to completely pitch black and storming. So we'll see in, in three hours if we get caught by a storm. Okay. By the way, if you were curious what a Scarlet and Grey Fafides is, it's one of these guys. They, they develop both the red and gray main body coloration and then have bright green eyes. Um, unfortunately, the one that was supposed to be earlier in the sale got, got taken out. All right, next, number nine. Here's an Orchid Favites. Yeah, going back to lighting, again, it's just get, get the cheapest little LED strip. One of the other guys that helps out here, his name's Lucas, he has like a, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's, like, it's, a, it's essentially a nano. And he found some 24 inch lights that are literally $40 that come with a bulb. And, you know, he's like, you know, asking, you know, can I swap out the bulb, and put it in an ATI? I'm like, sure you can. Or you can just like run that cheap bulb um, for about six months. Cause that cheap, that cheap bulb is going to give plenty of good spectrum for six hours a day. That's all it takes. And by the time you come home, you can turn it off. All right. Next up, number 10. Small little jack o' lan lantern Leptosiris rag. And the focus is a bit off on that guy. Um, are you using the flashlight as well? Great. And so uh, occasionally we do shine um, an LED flashlight at this thing. Those, um, it's like a $50 piece that's made by Orphic. It's just like a single, I think a five watt 
blue. Just to give you guys like a different different look. All right, moving on number 11. I have an ATA power module and I like it. Problem is the LCD screen, they're bad and can stop working, but the rest is really good. Yeah, I haven't um I haven't seen anybody have L C D problems with those. Um But you know, pretty much anything that's like designed for or, or designed or marketed for the reef aquarium hobby, it's gonna be really, really expensive. Um uh, this is number eleven, correct? Okay, so let's go to number twelve. This is an Ultra of Cyrus. It looks a lot like a jack-o'-lantern, but I guess, uh... Okay, yeah, typically the Ultras have larger, like, greenish-yellow eyes that, and the, the, that greenish-yellow extends all the way to the edge. This one, yeah, it's kind of borderline. Can you hit it with the flashlight? Let me see what that looks like. Um, let's see, where was I thinking about the, about the ATIs? So, Oh, there we go. Um, I, I happen to really, 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 really like ATI, but I agree that it is a lot of money. And uh, I'm going to need a whole bunch of fixtures. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going to Amazon and I'm buying those super ultra cheap fixtures. You will find them in no time. Just do a search for T5 fixtures, grow lights. Um, let's go to number 13. And they will ship those things for about 150 bucks. Noob mistake. Noob mistake. Uh, yeah, and so here's the thing. If they happen to not be good at all, which is entirely possible, I am sure they are like the cheapest junk that China could possibly send over here, right? Um, but for $200 and it comes with eight bulbs, shipped two day two day service with Amazon Prime um, what if it doesn't last very long it doesn't matter it's $200 like who cares so I mean maybe ATIs are absolutely worth eight hundred nine hundred thousand dollars but if the really 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 cheap stuff happens to work I'm all right with that I mean you know it's I think there might be a study out there or something that that shows like the, the higher price stuff does just perform better like maybe the bulbs are you know they burn brighter they last longer something I haven't read that but maybe there's some 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 truth to, to that sort of thing out there that makes it worth um, going to a more expensive fixture I have not seen it okay let's go to number 14 this is a golden leptosiris Are there any T5 fixtures that can be mounted and not hanged? Yeah, there's plenty of them. They usually come with like legs of some sort. Um, I can't think of the brand off the top, like Current. Like those, that's a pretty inexpensive fixture, I believe. And they, they come with like plastic legs. Geissman have tank stands, okay. Are LED lights good enough for all kinds of coral? A lot of things will be, be fine under, under LEDs. Um, I guess it, it, it depends on, on, on everything that you're looking for, I guess. Next up, uh, 15. I mean, most things will grow under LED. Most things. Um, you might get better performance out of something else. But then again, I think that the, the people that are looking to shop for LEDs and what they're really made for, it's about controllability, about energy efficiency, and really highlighting coral. Like, like the actinic uh, look that you get from LED is pretty much unparalleled. I mean, it's fantastic. So, I mean, if those things are really, really high on your shopping list, great. LED is the thing for you. Um, for me, that's like a, actually like a coral farmer. Um, right now, I don't think that they're quite as good as the other um, fixtures, even like despite all the, all the downsides to T5 and middle halide. Okay, next up, 16. I did a, I did a video kind of recently, maybe a couple weeks ago, uh, talking about all the different lighting technologies. You might want to check that out if you haven't seen it already. And if you wanted to see like a, a tank that is all LED, that's like really, really, really impressive, you can search my channel for, um, 
for Will's tank as well as Nathan's tank. Both of those are like excellent examples under um, LED. Um, having said that, uh, Will has gone full T5 and is going to, to go full T5 on his next build, whereas Nathan is all in on the LED camp. So um, even amongst two people that have had success with LED, you can have diverging opinions. So there you go. Okay, next up, 17. Okay, last time you talked about growth not being a good measure of keeping coral. I guess I did say that. I still say that. Um, what is the measure that you would look for? I would look for, like, number one, color. Um, the biggest thing is I want outstanding color. If you just happen to have a big coral that's poorly colored, you just have a big coral. It, it's, it's not going to excite anybody. Okay, next up, uh, number 18. Um, so the first thing I would always look for is like outstanding color. And the next thing that I would look for is like just the, the, the overall health of the thing itself. So I mean like how like nice, big and puffy and robust looking are the polyps, things like that. Because um, in, in, in other people's aquariums, occasionally I'll see um, like an A-can, for example, and the polyps are four times bigger than mine. And the funny thing is I was the one who sold them that A-can. So clearly there's something going on quite different from his system to my system. Um, sometimes it's not necessarily lighting. It could be um, just like the methodology. It could be the, the, the filtration method. Maybe they're doing something with Zeovit. Maybe they're doing something with carbon dosing. Uh, what are they feeding? Something's going on differently. Um, and that's worth looking into. So things like that. If you're just growing coral, like I said, I mean, if corals aren't growing, they're probably dying. It's like, so as long as you're not killing your corals, you're doing pretty well, right? I mean, that, that's a pretty low standard, not killing stuff. So yeah, that's why I say like, just, just growth on its own is not great. Not a great measure. Okay, let's go to number 19. Still some more for Vites. Coral clowns. I have brownish colored film in my tank. Goes away after a water change, but immediately comes back. Tank parameters are near perfect. It sounds just like uh, diatoms, and I think that pretty much everybody struggles with that. So like, quick poll in chat. Let me know how often you guys have to clean your glass. So I'm just kind of curious what the what the gallery has to, to say on that. Is Robbie there? No, he's not here. He's uh, attending a UFC event um, that's going to be going on this evening. What? Yeah, he's got tickets. And by the way, he just texted and said that he met Robbie Lawler. <laughs> he's like, oh my god, I just met Robbie Lawler. He's, like, he's geeking out. So yeah, the, the, the UFC is 203 and it's happening up in Cleveland. All right, next up, number 20. Every week, every four to five days, once a week. We here clean it every uh, three to four days. Some people clean it like every two days, like, like every other, other day or even every day. So there you go. I mean, again, going back to the whole diatom thing, everybody has it. If you don't have it, I would be more worried than if you had to clean your tank every day. Because whatever's stopping your diatoms from growing in might have an effect on your corals as well. Next up, number 21. The thing is, uh, uh, diatoms are very closely related to zooxanthellae. So if you're doing stuff to kill diatoms, it might affect their close cousins that are keeping your corals alive. So there you go, a quick, uh, a quick straw poll of, of how often people clean their stuff. Next up, 22. Also there's a new product that, that came around. Okay, so actually before I get into that, that new product. Um, so Hollywood Stunner was with the previous one you saw and this is an orange mutation of that same thing. In addition you can see how like wonky their polyps even get. So 
yes, this giant polyp in the front is actually just an expanded polyp of the same sort of chalice that you saw previously. That was mostly green. They can have that level of diversity. Is there a way to get rid of diatom safely? Uh, not really, just keep scrubbing your glass. Okay, next up, 23. Greetings from Malaysia. Welcome, welcome. I didn't have a chance to visit Malaysia, but um, I would actually like to go. I'm all about vacationing in Asia. Okay, let's see here. Are you gonna have any floral decorities on the sale? Uh, not this time. We're, we're still um, waiting on a good source for that. We talked to somebody that can get them, but uh, it, they're usually only available in the wintertime according to him, like pretty much the summertime killed them all. There's a, there's a big issue with getting uh, good recordia. There's like all kinds of issues in the wild where most of them are dead. Okay, next up, 24. Is it possible to zoom out on each coral? Um, only by moving the cart. <laughs> we could like move the entire thing back just like an inch. Yeah, so like the lens that we have on the camera is not a zoom lens. So it's not just like a, a quick turn. You have to kind of move the entire thing. And then reframe. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. It was kind of uh, tight on there. And these corals are not large. They're like, what, inch, inch and a half at most? except for maybe some of the LPS that was larger. Uh, okay, next up, 25. Will you have other clams other than Darasa? Uh, yes, we were still kind of like messing around, um, trying different things with the clams. Um, and unfortunately, a whole bunch of clams got stuck to uh, these shells. And once they, if you know anything about clams, once they uh, stick their foot onto something, it's really dangerous to, to remove them. Um, so basically a whole bunch of clams that we got that we like, they are now our pets because we can't ship them anywhere. They're, they're kind of stuck to, to, to large pieces of, of clam shells and substrate and stuff like that. So there is actually gonna be two clams on this live sale. One is a Durasa and one is a Maxima. We'll get more later. Next up, 26. It's a Miami hurricane. Okay, let's go to number 27. in a bit. It'll be an event horizon for La Favia once we get there. Yeah, wind is kicking up again, so I'm just like expecting out of nowhere just torrential downpour. Catching up on chat here. Hmm. Eh, that guy needs to be s has switched. Yeah. There we go. Much better perspective. Do you need a wet towel to towel off? Okay. Okay, let's go on ahead to number 28. Thanks, Joshua. Glad you like the, the YouTube stuff. Is that uh, thing taken off? Is the, that was really weird. The what? Yeah. 
Yeah. They're having some difficulties there. Not sure what happened. What's up with that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll see what you can do with that. So in the meantime, while we wait, I also have some, some macroalgae that's going to be coming up shortly here. I want to get more into that because um, there's like a whole bunch of different, different like uh, decorative macroalgae that I think are every bit as cool as corals. And a lot more people are into kind of like these designer refugiums that might be a little bit bored of Chato and just want something something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So we have a few different things going on. Okay. All right. So that guy was number 28. Next up is number 29. There's like a ton of these Scarlet and Griff uh, Favites on this show. At least they look nice. <laughs> okay, what number is that? Is that 29? Okay, so let's go to 30, which I think is going to be our last Scarlet and Grey Favites. <laughs> I think that's about four of them up on here. Something like that. Oh, I nearly forgot. So, um, last time we had a live show, I had promised that um, there was going to be a f some flash sales in conjunction with this live show. So uh, for today and tomorrow, there's a whole bunch of like heavily discounted items. So if you wanted just to, uh, to open up a new window and just like peruse titlegardens.com, you might find some, some deeply discounted stuff, like 50% or more. So uh, you guys are welcome to check that, as, that, that out as well, if I could talk. All right, next up, number 31, is a reverse war coral for Vites. Dragon's Breath macroalgae is nice. Then my tangs ate it. Yeah, that's pretty much what happens. And, and people were saying, like, yeah, it's like, this is great. It's, it's attractive, and your tangs, you can feed it to your tangs. Um, that stuff might sell for a lot more than your tangs one day. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like feeding your, it's like feeding your, uh, fish gold flake or something, which they could probably eat and digest, by the way. You can actually ingest a certain amount of gold. Next up, 32. I went to like a really fancy restaurant once and like they had these like chocolate candies at the end that were wrapped in gold. And so yeah, it turns out that you can, you can actually digest, I think, I forget the exact quantity, but like gold leaf, yeah. You can incorporate gold into your body. Fancy. So yeah, that's basically what you're doing when you're feeding uh, uh, dragon's breath to tangs. All right, so let's go to 33, which is this red grape algae. The pieces that you're gonna get are gonna be roughly like what can fit into a three ounce container. I. Uh, I forget the scientific name for this, and I really couldn't pronounce it, even if I did know it. Do you consider a refugium indispensable? No, I, I mean, it's not indispensable, um, but a lot of people tend to like it. There, there's, there's some benefits to it. Okay, number uh, that was 33 and 34. They're both the red grapes, so you can grab that if you like. Moving on to 35, it's a green codium. You might have to back up just a little bit. It seems like you're having some issues. Um, yeah, getting it all into into frame there. Because these are these are quite large, especially once you um, once it uh, gets fully expanded. I mean, they're like the size of your hand. Between something like between like a a golf ball to a baseball size piece. I think you're also. Um, focusing on the front glass more than the actual coral. Or the coral, the algae. A little bit better. And um, Luke K. 
Can you uh, move the shade over? We're getting a little bit of glare, so we have to, to shade some stuff. Yeah, refugiums, um, I did a video on that as well. If you haven't seen that, you might want to check that out. But I, I tend to like them. Um, I think, it, I, I don't know if anybody's really done any um, studies that show like just how effective at doing like the filtration aspects that they claim, or even like the, the whole feeding the tank thing. Because the idea is that you're, um, you're kind of generating um, inverts that are you know free swimming that can then go back and feed the rest of the tank. Um, there's, it'll definitely grow stuff. Uh, is it going to be enough to actually do any feeding? I don't know. Uh, but the way I, I look at it, let's go to number 36, which is uh, the dragon's breath algae. Um, the way that I look at it, it almost doesn't matter because I think that refugiums can be made to look so good that I don't care if it has any beneficial effect because they are, they're so pretty on their own if done right. I mean, you can, you can make them as ugly as you want to. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you, I know you've seen some gross, gross refugiums out there. You can make them awesome too. And so if you go on the more awesome end of things, it's like a secondary show tank. And if it does anything beneficial, there you go. Okay, 37. Indo purple tip hammer. And again, I hope to have more uh, different types of macroalgae as we go. Are the discounted items in the store marked as such? It should be. It should show like the regular price and like the percentage discount, if I'm not mistaken. I can check for you. One sec. Okay, so strange. So if you uh, are looking at the general category page, no, strangely. Um, that's weird. You learn something new about my own site every day. But if you click into the item, uh, it is discounted. So for example, so this, is, this isn't a total uh, Easter egg hunt, I guess, or needle in a haystack sort of thing. Uh, look up the jack-o'-lantern leptosiris, a very, very popular coral. Um, it's discounted uh, from $75 to $35. So, um, and you can see like there, there's like a special price listed. And I don't know why it doesn't show up in the main display though. That is very odd. Okay, anyway. So if, there, if you were looking for something in particular, I would go straight there and check it out. All right, uh, let's go to number 38, which is an Indo, another Indo purple tip hammer. It's a slightly smaller one. So um, I have a couple of different tanks that have uh, that have fish that um, kind of like are constantly picking at rock. So, for example, copper band butterflies. One of them is in like a 300 gallon tub, just filled to the brim with live rock, and that one is always fat, regardless of whether I feed it um, aptasia or not. So, yeah, in general, I think that um, that kind of having this baseline invertebrate production is very healthy for the fish. And probably for the coral as well. Um, there's so much feeding that coral tend to do, especially at night. 39, it's an Aussie green tip hammer. There's even a little bit of speckling that's going on in the tips of these uh, green tip hammers. Okay, next up, number 40. Okay. It will be a green tip. Yeah, I've definitely noticed like a big benefit just to having a ton of live rock in the systems. Having said that, a lot of my systems here are so, I guess, like frag and production oriented that they 
don't have nearly the the amount of live rock that I would like. Even in their large tanks, so they're like 240 gallons, but they really could use a, a way to incorporate more rock. Okay, let's go to number 41. This is one of those uh, Yaya Menzis frog spawns from, from Australia. Coral base is inflated, but the tentacles are thin. Is this normal? Mm, doesn't sound like it. It sounds like something's bothering it. Okay, next up, 42. Okay, let's move on to 43. It's a neon green candy cane. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people playing around with, uh, with in addition to just like in, inverts that are being produced by refugium, also messing with um, like bacterial populations. Because there, I did read a paper talking about how um, there's like a surprising amount of bacteria that's collected and eaten by corals. And a big part of coral nutrition is bacteria-based, every bit as much as it is um, uh, like plankton-based. So I think that that might have something to do with the success people are having with uh, tanks that involve some sort of carbon dosing in their methodology. So things like Zeovit, things like um, like the Red Sea methods and stuff like that, that that um, that in, that dose some sort of carbon, even like vodka dosing and stuff like that. It's, it's all carbon dosing to promote specific bacterial growth. Let's go to number 44. It's a cobalt candy cane. Eh, they, have, they have green centers. This is kind of like a bad angle for him. Actually, no, 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 I take that back. He does not have a green center. This, this one is like a, kind of like that cobalt blue all the way through. The next one, number 45, is a pinwheel candy cane and that this guy has a green center. So let's go into 45, Michael. There we go. Yeah. If we if we fl flip them on a side, you can flip you can. Them on side? No, I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, okay. Just take my word for it. It's green. And let's see. Next up is 46, which will take just a moment to uh, to scoot over. And uh, Luke, can you grab the um, the shade down, please? Thanks. So. As a part of that uh, that article that I that I happened to see, um, they were talking about how corals, especially like certain SPS, grow into a specific shape um, based on the current that they receive to kind of uh, kind of trap bacteria. Like the the way that the water flows through it almost makes like a like a web specifically to to, to grab onto to bacteria and then the corals would ingest it from that. Um, I don't know, well I, I've personally obviously never seen that, but it wouldn't surprise me at all because now that we feed rotifers, which is basically like a cloud of pink stuff, um, what we've noticed is that um, a lot of our Acropora, they all get this, these like stringy white things on them. It's like this, this mucus coat and uh, they kind of individually go to a polyp within that coral. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a pretty neat, um, it's a pretty neat thing to see every single time we feed. So it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they also happen to collect bacteria at night or, and stuff like that. Okay. That's a gold flake acanthophilia. Next up, uh, 47, is a large orchid sign arena. Okay. 
Next up, 48. It's an orange helmet fungia. And you'll have to ignore that snail that's taking up most of the frame there. I think it's an Astrea snail, Astrea. Because we have trochuses as well, but very few trochus. So I'm wondering uh, which one, which kind that is. But that's an orange helmet. Okay. Let's go ahead and scoot over to 49, which is a green helmet. So Joshua just brought up something. I have a philosophy that if your tank should be set up like a refugium in the aspect of creating a sustainable continuous life cycle. That is great, and I, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, the only difficulty is uh, fish are very, very good predators at what they like to eat. And so, for example, um, when, whenever we have like a tank that has gone completely nuts with that taser, like out of control, and we can't physically manage it anymore, because we try, um, let's go on to number 50, which is a, an Australian Duncan. Um, yeah, so let's just say we have a, a, a tank that's filled. I mean, there might be hundreds of Aptasia that have sprung up. They're everywhere. They're in the substrate. They're on the rocks. They're on the glass. They're everywhere. Out of control. Uh, we put in a, a copper band, and a couple, for the first couple days, it might not do anything. And then one day, all of the Aptasia is gone. I mean, similarly, um, that could be copepods, like putting in a mandarin, and suddenly you just don't ever see a copepod again. That sort of thing can happen. Okay, next up, 51. We got getting into some of our acans here. Are there crabs in Tyler Gardens' tanks? Uh, not on purpose. Uh, we, there's like maybe three hermit crabs total in all of our systems here. I think I also mentioned in um, in the last live stream, I had purchased a bunch of um, a bunch of crabs and stuff like that for use for a video that I wanted to produce. And that went poorly. Uh, let's go to 52. I got, uh, for example, I got a, like a porcelain crab to, to host in some bubble tip anemones. Acclimated him, put him, put him in the tank, never saw him again. I got a, a pistol shrimp and goby pair. I see the goby, no idea where the shrimp went. Um, there's like a little boxer crab that I got to, to show off like some symbiotic relationship. Never saw him again. So basically everything that I, that I picked up for the pur purpose of this video, none of it, none of it got on video. So technically, yeah, they're all still in the tanks. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, let's go to 53. Some more acans. All right, next up, 54. It's a green pinwheel. Can you hit these with the flashlight? Yep. There we go. Yeah, the fluorescence comes out quite a lot under, under LED, obviously. Having said that, um, I noticed that T5, as far as like coloration of ACANs, uh, is very, very positive. Okay, next up, 55. We have a few different types of uh, Micromusa. Just a couple different color morphs. Okay, 56. Smaller little Micromusa there. It's got a cool pattern in the center though. I didn't notice that until now. Oh, very cool. We have um, a viewer from Norway. One of my friends is like is vacationing there currently. He's having a great time. Okay, let's go to 57. The purple and red variety of Micromusa. Both Micromusa and Acans can change color quite dramatically. So your lighting is going to play a big part into how these things eventually look in your tank.
Okay, how much top off water do you use? Um, a bunch, like a whole bunch. If I had to guess, 50 to 100 gallons a day, maybe something like that. Could it's a lot. It's a whole lot. Okay, next up, 58. is another UFO Micro Musa. And I need to take a bathroom break. I will be right back. Two minutes. And we're back. Yeah, as soon as I got up, I heard sirens. Go figure. Vision, waiting for chalice. We actually covered chalices. Um, we, they were like in the 30s, I believe. All right, let's go to number 59. Did you noob it? Craig Smith, hello from Great Britain. Thank you, welcome. Any SPS? Yes, there will be, Craig. Um, there's uh, in about 10-ish or so uh, corals, there we're gonna start into a big section on SPS. It's okay. Actually, you didn't tune in late. All you need to do is just like scroll back and you can see a whole bunch of them because I think that you can mess with like the 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 timeline. Okay. So this guy is 59, which is that okay. It's listed as a Rainbow Aiken Barabanki and I have talked about this coral in past sales. I'm almost 100% sure it is not an Aiken Barabanki. It is also probably not in a Chinata, which would have been my second guess. Uh, I really don't know exactly what it is, because polyps are about four times bigger than a, than a typical Echinata, but they're slightly different than um, a Barabankis. But I just have it listed here as a Barabanki for simplicity. It could be something else entirely. Not quite sure. Uh, next up, 60. Is a, is a slightly different one. I really like Zoas, but my yellow tank eats them, so I have to pick what Zoas or get a new tank. So that might have something to do with the size of the colony of Zoas. I've noticed that there's some fish that don't have a have a history of um, of eating zoanthids that will eat a single polyp or two. Like we have um, both tangs and fox faces that will eat newly cut frags, and sometimes it's just like the newness of that piece, it's like, oh, this is new. I wonder if I can eat it. And they'll just like eat, eat the, the two polyp frag that you end up getting. So that, that could be more a thing rather than, oh, this fish just likes to eat zoanthids. It might just be a, um, a curiosity thing. Let's go to 61. This is a real Bauer Banky. See how it's, it's quite a bit larger than the, the polyp is. But I'll show you an Echinata later, and the, the, their polyps are quite a bit smaller than that, uh, that rainbow-centered guy. Can you make a Seriatopora calendrum care video? I don't know what that species is. Okay, next up, 62. This is a lobo brain. We don't usually have a lot of these. Um, for whatever reason, uh, 
Lobophilia and Symphilia do really, really, really poorly in our tanks. I think Symphil Symphilia do poorly in everyone's tank. And it's a shame because they look completely dazzling. They're really expensive. You get them, the first thing that happens is they lose a lot of their awesome color. The next thing that happens is they get really, really, really shrunken and then they die. And Lobophilia never used to be like that, but they might be collected from the same region or something like that now. Um, so you're getting very similar traits with these corals. So, uh, so far so good on, on this Lobophilia, but we typically don't have a lot of these. Yeah, it looks like that, that yellow tang just likes to eat Zoas. Could happen. All right, let's go to 63. This is that Echinata that I promised. A lot smaller polyp. Very similar in appearance to that, that uh, rainbow center thing. Okay, let's go on to 64, which is an orange pavona. And I think we're just about, yeah, we're, we're gonna get into like our little SPS range here. Pavona are a very, very easy, fast-growing SPS. Uh, if you ever wanted to get into it, just to, just to kind of try out something, just to get your uh, feet wet as far as that goes, Pavona is pretty darn bulletproof. Okay, next up, 65 is another orange Pavona. And uh, there's several varieties of it. The orange is probably the most uh, in terms of fluorescent qualities. It's very, very, very bright under like um, an actinic blue uh, LED. Next up, 66. It's a free care Pavona. Do you ship to Canada? Unfortunately, no, this is US only. And it's a shame because we have so many international viewers. I mean, there's a whole bunch of folks from, uh, from, the, from Europe, some from Asia, um, and unfortunately, it's, we're not able to send corals overseas. Okay, let's go to 67. It's another free care. These guys have like really bright, uh, like fluorescent green uh, tips to their tentacles. What's in the drinking cup today? This is just water. That's why I have to keep on getting up to, and using the bathroom. It's like a, it's a 30 ounce uh, Yeti. It's a fake Yeti that I got from Amazon. Uh, I didn't know that it was a fake when I ordered it, but once I got it and, and I happened to catch a video that said, here's how you can tell if your Yeti's fake. This one's a fake. So uh, yeah, it's a 30 ounce thing. I just keep on filling it up and drinking from it like all day. So I'm definitely well hydrated if nothing else. Let's go to 68, which is a blue Pavona. This is one of my favorite Pavonas now. Uh, you can't see it on this one because it goes pretty much edge to edge, but the growth rim of it is also green. Well, the body's, the body's blue, edge is green. Okay, next up, 69. Another blue Pavona. Wonder what's on top there? Just some crud. You know, it's a little worm, like a feather duster or something. Oh, okay. Do you ship to the US? Yes, only to the US. Okay, next up, number 70. So the previous Pavonas that you saw are encrusting varieties. Uh, the green pavona that you're seeing here uh, kind of forms these like uh, these vertical plates. What's the best place to travel if you want to go to Japan? Um, you really can't go wrong with either Tokyo or Kyoto. Um, I happen to think that Kyoto is, it might be my favorite city like ever. <laughs> Um, if you're looking for something like very tropical, Okinawa is ridiculously gorgeous. It's, um, yeah, like if you, if you want to go diving and stuff like that and, and, and enjoy um, kind of like a, like I said, like a tropical ocean experience, 
you really ha will have a hard time beating Okinawa. Um, it also just depends on what you want to do. Like Tokyo is like the biggest city on earth. You can do a whole bunch of things there. Okay, next up, 71. Here's a slightly larger green Pavona. Yeah, scuba diving, you know, I, I think that's going to be a, like a, an entire thing to my channel. I want to go scuba diving in as many places as possible, record all the dives and post them to, to my channel, just so people can see what how different natural reefs are to A, their tanks, and B, from each other. Like, uh, a lot of, we, we, there's a huge disconnect in the hobby uh, between what is going on in natural reefs and what we see like day to day and what we see online is like oh you know this person has a, has a great looking reef tank and they are great looking reef tanks but they, that, they don't look anything like what you would see in the wild so it just just kind of like understanding like the, the differences and, and things like that it's kind of it's kind of helpful okay let's go to number 72 the rainbow montipora this is my favorite montipora and it might be my favorite coral period hands down could you scroll down just a little bit yeah because Thanks. The, uh, the text overlay kind of cuts into the coral there. That's why. But yeah, I love this coral. It will probably sell by the time I'm done with the sentence. They typically sell very quickly. Next up, 73, is another Rainbow Monty. Is that three times so far? <laughs> you can tell when it's, when it's coming up. These are all aquaculture. No, not all of them. Um, there's things. That, there's, there's certain things that you can't cut. So obviously those are not. But uh, like these rainbow montiporas, a lot of the, the the frags that are able to be propagated, we do. Yeah, I got my open water certification in Mexico. Uh, I was there for a week and spent almost the entire time getting certified, and it was definitely very worth it. Next up, 74. You know, that's another cool thing about, about scuba diving that um, I appreciate the heck out of. So underwater, you can't communicate uh, with each other by voice chat unless you have like a microphone system, which you will never, ever, ever have. Um, so when I was diving in Okinawa, I had a legitimate language barrier with my dive master that I was diving with. And once you're underwater, it doesn't matter because all the hand signs are the same no matter where you are. So it's like, you know what, we have, we have a language barrier on the surface, but underwater, crystal clear communication. And that, that's, like, that's the beauty of, of diving to me. It's like, there's so much that you can communicate and convey um, without the use of actual spoken language. And it, it's kind of neat just to experience that every now and again. Next up, 75. Another Scarlet Monty. Oh yeah, the underwater chalkboard. That's a good idea too. That's a really good idea. Unless you're diving in Okinawa and you have a language barrier with the person that's, that's taking you out. <laughs> okay, next up, 76. Yeah, obviously having the chalkboard is better than not. But at the same time, I like to travel as light as possible underwater because there's a lot of bulk that you have to take down there with you. And a lot of it's like really cumbersome to like to to get around and there's like a lot of things to kind of to grab at and can get caught on stuff. So I like to go as light as I can trying to. Are you going to Macna? No. Macna's going on right now. It's been uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I am not going. I, I, I had plans too, but then I decided to hit the eject button on that. I would rather spend it with you guys here. There you go. Okay, next up, 77. It's like, yeah, I have a, I have a hot date. It's you guys. All right, next up, 
78. It's a purple sand dollar. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of the, the natural reefs, as far as diving goes, uh, are experiencing all kinds of bleaching stuff. And I hear that um, a big problem is going on in Australia with the Great Barrier Reef. 79. Another uh, purple sand dollar. Yeah, uh, like, I, like there's some statistics that 40% that of that reef, a huge reef, is all bleached. Get the new Samsung and dive with it. It's waterproof. You know I'm like five feet away, right? <laughs> I might, because you know what? Here's my iPhone. I don't like this phone. It cracks if I look at it wrong. And it does dumb stuff too. Like whenever I uh, have like wireless headphones, as soon as I get like a phone call or something, it opens up iTunes. Like it's, it's silly. Anyway, I, know. I, I might get a Samsung. I might get a Samsung. Next up, uh, number 80. Uh, purple Montepor Confusa. Any Xenias? Uh, there will be. And Zoas are towards the end of the stream, yes. Um, how are people in Japan with English? Is it hard to communicate? Uh, it can be, yeah. Like, uh, I mean, if you think about it, it, it is hard to travel further away from the United States or Europe than Japan. Like, you just like map it out, like try to go further away. It's, it's a very, very, very non-English place. And that's kind of what I like about it. So there's signs that are in English, you can read. Um, but yeah, you'll want to go there armed with like a few helpful phrases. You know, like, excuse me, do you understand English is a pretty helpful phrase. Uh, things like that. Uh, but for the most part, communication is not that big of a problem. Okay, next up, number 81. Little green digitata here. Yes, next month is October, the Halloween live sale. I'm, I'm, I am excited for that live sale. There's going to be uh, another live sale. Uh, and I'll, I'll post the schedule because usually I don't even schedule these things out very well. And so everybody's like, when's the next live sale? That's like the number one question I received. Um, the next one is going to be on the 30th of September. Okay. So let me look at the map or the, the map. I lied. It's going to be on October 1st. And then the next one after that will be the 29th. So the, so the Halloween live sale obviously is gonna be on the 29th and I am very excited for that one because generally speaking I have friends over and we get drunk during the live sale so if you guys want to get dressed up have some fun right before actual Halloween tip tip back a few beverages like I don't really drink I only drink socially and that's gonna be a social time so mark your calendars for that I guess Okay, uh, next up, 82. Guys wanted clams? Here's a clam. This is a little Maxima, blue Maxima. How will I top the pirate squid hat? I will try. Cats are cute. Yes, they are. I'm a cat person. I don't know how that became a, a, to a topic in, in chat. I must have missed it, but Yes, I like, I like the cats. All right, number 83 is a Durasa with a snail bro there. So the Durasa is significantly larger. He's probably like close to six inches, I would say. All right, I, I plan to get more um, more clams in the future. My biggest worry is that we would kill a whole bunch of them, and 
truth be told, a couple of them did die, but the rest of them are doing pretty well. And, and we got metal halides and stuff like that over that tank, so I'm kind of confident that long term they'll be pretty good. Will you ever offer any cheaper shipping options? Probably not. The, the shipping stuff, you'd be surprised at how expensive shipping is. If you went to FedEx.com right now, and the zip code here is 44321, if you uh, Try to send anything, about five pounds in a small box from here to anywhere in the US. It's probably gonna be retail $80. And so that $80 uh, is not including the actual box. It's not including all the shipping materials. It's not including all the labor that went into actually packing the corals, blah, 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 blah. Heat packs, cold packs for the summer. Um, so the $39.99 is not likely to change. However, you could just get it for free, spend $250. Or you can always send me a FedEx shipping label because maybe you work at a company that ships a lot with FedEx and has a really, really sweet discount and you're gonna get it shipped to work. That also works. Okay, so next up is number 84. I think there's only been like a handful of times where anybody's actually sent me a shipping label but um, they were pretty confident that you know, their, their business does um, like a lot of shipping and would likely get a hefty discount. I know that, um, so let's say, let's just use that, that $80 um, per box shipping charge retail. Uh, to get 75% off uh, of that $80 shipping, I think that per year, you would have to ship out something like $500,000. Like that's how much FedEx would charge you for, for just the shipping. That's not $500,000 in product. That's $500,000 in shipping fees to get a 75% discount here. So um, to get cheaper than $40 shipping, you have to send out a heap of stuff. So maybe if I, if, if I like my sales got crazy perhaps, but that's a lot. That's like, that's a mansion every year that I'm paying to FedEx. Anyway, number 85. Yeah, shipping's crazy. Like it's, it's, it's no fun for, for anybody, believe me. Like, so I don't ship out a mansion's worth of shipping fees, but I ship out BMWs. It's a lot, it's a whole lot. <clears throat> Okay, next up, 86. What is the average schooling people have who open their own shops? I'm gonna guess somewhere between high school and a bachelor's in college. Next, is this 87 or 86? That's 86. 86. Okay, let's go to 87. Sometimes they get lost when it's all the same, uh, same naming. These guys were, were fragged somewhat recently, about a week ago. So they're just now uh, growing uh, back on that, on that edge that was cut. Okay, next up, 88. How do you think that the 165 wolf watt Chinese LED is good? Um, if good means it'll last a year, maybe two, before something goes wrong, I guess they're okay. Uh, they, they, a lot of them have electrical issues. So like the, the LEDs themselves, Pretty much most places use the same types of LEDs, and that's like the cheapest part of the fixture and the least likely to fail. It's just all the other electronic components tend, tend to fail. Um, will corals grow under cheap LEDs? Yes, but again, low bar for success. Let's go to 89. It's a really tiny Idaho grape, Acropora. I think it is anyways. The colors are right. Um, I'm not quite sure if the polyps are right though. I could be wrong on, on the ID for this guy, but definitely the colors look good. 
Can I keep a bird's nest in a three gallon? Does anybody know? I don't keep any three gallon tanks. I'm not into tiny tanks. Next up, 90. Got some forest green acros. Uh, not to sabotage my own uh, live sale here, but this one might be one of the things on that, that on that flash sale. Like I said, there's some severe, severely discounted items um, throughout the site. So you might want to check if you like this sort of thing. Next up, 91. I'm off to explore Oahu. Have a great live sale. Have fun. I love Hawaii. Hawaii's great. Okay, next, next up, 92. Do you post a schedule of what order the corals will be shown during the stream? I've done it once for the Patreon folks as like a sneak peek. I might go back to doing that. Um, basically, I just did like a quick walkthrough. I just like read off the numbers and just showed like just walking by what they are. And so the idea is just to give like those guys a little bit of a perk. Um, they would see the stuff like just a few hours basically the evening before um, and you know, right now I have like so few patrons like it hasn't really made any difference whatsoever but I think in the future it's, it's just a nice, nice little uh, sneak peek what's uh, up 93 is the next acropora here these guys are kind of cool because they have like purple polyps and, a, and kind of purple tips with a green base How do you deal with red slime algae? I consider that more of like a chemistry issue than anything. Um, you can try a little bit of physical removal, but you'll notice that it comes back the very next day, if not the next hour. Uh, so the most effective thing I've ever seen is just water changes and some chemical filtration in the form of activated carbon. Next up, 94. More flow also tends to help. More flow, a little bit less feeding, water change, activated carbon. Any combination of those things will help a lot. Next up, 95. And cooler temperatures too. I think that, that, uh, that you're more likely to have uh, red algae issues in warmer weather. Generally speaking, because we, uh, in a greenhouse here, we try to control temperature, obviously. However, we always get like a range of controllable temperatures. So right now we're towards like the 80 degree range and there's a lot of issues that pop up at 80 degrees and issues that are not persistent at 74 degrees. So I've noticed that temperatures like between like 74, 75, 76, it's perfectly safe to keep corals at that, at that temperature range and you avoid a lot of the issues that you get with like higher temperatures. Mainly stuff that involves pests hatching. Like right around like 80, 81 degrees, it's really, really, really warm and suddenly stuff that you thought that was killed off years ago comes back. Like where the heck did this come from? Oh, that's right. There's probably just these dormant eggs or whatever that just hung out for three years and are suddenly hatching now. Next up, 96. But long story short, that might also help with, um, with algae. It's like basically cyanobacteria issues. Yeah, these frog skins are a little bit closed right now. Going back to uh, to people having issues with with, uh, with fish picking on stuff, we have a fox face and a tang here that likes to pick at all the new stuff. And so when we set up all these corals, they come here and like, oh look, stuff. And we just start messing with these poor guys. 97. So typically these uh, these acros have a lot more extended pops, like this guy here. This is a better example. Much better. Anyone watching college football today? I 
Okay, so first off, I don't have live TV. I, I was one of those like, cord cutters, and I've been a cord cutter now for four years at least. I do not miss cable very much. However, you do suffer in the way of live sports unless you <coughs> illegal stream. <coughs> um, but and when, it, when it's basketball season, I have no problem watching some Venezuelan stream to watch my, my Cleveland Cavaliers, the world champion Cleveland Cavaliers. Thank you very much. Um, but last week, I, I spent uh, up in Michigan hanging out with my friends, and it was the first time that I watched my college football team play in like three years. Go figure. Let's go to number 98. So if you didn't already know, I am a Michigan Wolverine living in Ohio, which is like, again, that's like saying, uh, yeah, I, um, I joined ISIS. Like, <laughs> saying that is the same thing as saying you're a Michigan Wolverine fan here in Ohio. And Luke, what's your team? Ohio State. The Ohio, the Ohio State University. Go figure. <laughs> we have traitors amongst us here at Title Gardens. Okay, next up, number 99. Okay, well, one sec. It will be uh, an Acropora tenius. College football. They paid for the best athletes. That's why OSU might win it all. Okay. Next up, number 100. Actually, I'm not one to talk because, like, when I was at, at U of M, uh, it was very conspicuous that seemingly all of the football team drove the exact same Ford Explorer. Like, the entire team. Like, a hundred kids. I mean, it's, every single time you saw a Ford Explorer, you just knew there was going to be some football or basketball athletes. Okay, next up, 101. I'm not really sure what these are are really called, but they're uh, kind of interesting in that uh, their growth edge is from the side. They might be a, a, a type of a tabling Acropora, and um, they have like a, re a really, really nice blue tip on that growth edge. Any prediction for the 2016-27 NBA season? Um, I expect those dirty Golden State Warriors to do very well. Um, I'm curious to see how well they're going to do long term because they kind of um, shipped off their bench and all their room protection to get Kevin Durant, which is arguably the second best player in the league. Um, so yeah, that'll be interesting to see how well they, they do. Or will they just kind of get banged up over the course of the season or not? I don't know. Um, I think that any team that has LeBron James has a has a puncher's chance at it. So hopefully my team does well, but if they don't, I don't care. Like for for a sports championship deprived uh, area like this, let's go to one, uh, 102. Um, I feel like just winning that one championship, I'm playing with house money for the rest of my life. So if the Cavs never win again, if the Browns, I'm not even a Browns fan, if the Browns never win, which they never will, um, if the Indians, who are in first place, never win it, I don't care. Because the Cavaliers won it in 2016. Seriously, for the rest of my life, house money. In the best way possible, Yes. In the most historic way, most impressive way possible. You beat the unbeatable. Okay, next up, 103. Come on, when they were down 3-1, nobody thought the Cavs were going to win. Nobody. I mean, I can't even imagine they thought they were going to win. It, that's, it, it's insane. Anyway, and I probably just immediately lost all my Northern California customers right there. <laughs> oh, boy. Next up, 104. It was fixed. Yeah, it's like, it's fixed just like it was last year when we all got injured. And it was, and, and LeBron and Matthew Della Vadova almost did it by themselves. 
Seriously, as long as LeBron James is on the floor, that guy has a chance to win. And, like, I'm not a huge LeBron fan. Like, he... So, I live in Akron, okay? He literally lives five minutes from here, okay? He is a god here. He could literally... Um... He could plant a dirty bomb downtown, and nobody's going to have a problem with LeBron here. Like, he is untouchable, as, as untouchable as it comes. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. People here kind of know stuff about, about LeBron, and he's both good and, like, really, really terrible at the same time. Okay, let's go to 105. Uh, so, th yeah, it's, that's a mixed bag. But then again, he's also one that um, arranged for like a thousand scholarships uh, for like uh, underprivileged kids here to the University of Akron. Like a thousand scholarships. I mean, granted, he didn't pay for all of it. Like he made like a bank pay, which is like in my eyes way better. Um, but yeah, like who does that? I mean, nobody's ever done that to, to put that many kids through college. That's crazy. So I can't get too hard on the guy. He won me a championship. And he's uh, putting all those kids through college. Okay, let's go to 106. It's a pink bird's nest. I know somebody here keeps on asking about bird's nests. Here's a whole bunch. Um, <laughs> I don't know what, what species they are. I always thought they were just hystrix. Syriatopora hystrix. All right. It was fixed. <laughs> oh, boy. I can talk about the calves forever. Let's go to 107. I, uh, speaking of Cavalier news, my boy Iman Shumpert got busted with weed in Atlanta, which is like really, really, so it doesn't surprise me that uh, an NBA player got busted for weed because I, I'm pretty sure that like all NBA players smoke weed. I'm more surprised that he got caught driving with weed. If I had NBA player money, the first thing I would do is probably set my driver's license on fire, never drive again. I'd be sitting in the back of an armored Maybach with a personal driver forever. Like, I hate driving so much. I want to buy a Tesla purely because it has autopilot. And even though it's not per perfectly safe, it's okay. It's okay. As long as it's kind of safe. I want my car driving me around. Hate driving. All right, let's go to 108. It's a purple stylo. Tristan, it sucks to be obsessed with this hobby, also being 15 and not able to buy huge tanks. You will get the chance one day. One day we will all be able to make bad decisions and buy huge tanks. <laughs> Alright, let's go to 109. Yeah, like uh, Luke here loves to, like, to, to look at like Craigslist and stuff like that to, to see what's out there. And he found uh, like a used 300 gallon tank, eight foot long tank, with an eight bulb um, ATI fixture for like $2,000. That can get you into a lot of trouble right there. Are you close to Cincinnati, four hours away? A friend of mine's brother started a coral shop down there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty far away. I thought you would have posted a video about the Cavs winning the championship, especially after coming back down 3-1. I was too out of my mind to even, to even think about it. My, my reaction is very, very strange. Like, I was like completely freaking out, as in not making a sound <laughs> during that whole game. Yeah, 110. Let's go to 110. Uh, yes, uh, my, my friends um, were, I, I watched it with a, with, with a group of friends, and they were all going crazy, jumping up and down, and I was like dead silent. And they're like, they're asking me like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm freaking out. And they, they, thought, they got a big kick out of that, because I was like so stoic. But I was legitimately freaking out. <clears throat> all right. 111, are you gonna hit? Uh, almost. <laughs> there you go.
All right, so these are neon green stylos. Bunch of, bunch of different types of stylos that we have here. And I think that we're gonna get into possible pores next. Okay, so next is gonna be uh, the first of several possible pores, which, again, flash sale. Check out the website. If you wanted a pasta lapora, I think that both the greens and the pinks are very inexpensive right now. How to keep large Kenya tree from falling over? Shouldn't be falling over. Um, hmm, that is very, very strange behavior. Ours are usually all inflated. I typically, like whenever I see something really, really strange, the first my, my first instinct is to do water change. What a shock for my regular viewers. All right, next is, this is uh, 112, the pink pasta We have these growing out of, our, out of our ears at this point, so many. Do you get those little worms with red spiral tubes growing on your corals? On the corals, not usually. Um, you can remove those if you want. They're perfectly harmless. Usually, those grow in the dark. They're they're uh, they're non photosynthetic. They're they're just like filter feeders, and they're usually like in a sump. You get these little uh, little white squigglies with bright red um, worms. They're completely safe. Next up, one thirteen, another pink pasta Next up, one fourteen is a green pasta And like I said, these are all flash sale items. They might even be cheaper on the flash sale than here, but at least with this, you get to see uh, like what you see is what you get representation. One twelve is not on the site. It might have been bought. If if if, if something uh, is not is no longer there, it got purchased. I'm not really paying attention to, to what got purchased yet. Um, so here's another thing. <laughs> so uh, I know that sometimes people send me uh, emails like right after the live sale. After the live sale, I check out completely. Like <laughs> I will turn off the phone, turn off my computer, and I am gonzo. So I, I will usually get back to everybody's uh, questions uh, on Sunday. Also, um, there's a, a high likelihood that we will send out your corals Monday for delivery Tuesday, but this particular Monday might be tight because a whole bunch of people have placed regular orders through the website. So um, a, several orders might be bumped to Tuesday for delivery Wednesday, stuff like that. Okay, next up, uh, 115. Okay, Bruce Hansen flash sale. Yeah, so um, I decided to do a little, something a little special. Um, so during um, the live shows, like the weekend of the live show, so today and tomorrow, there are some heavily discounted items throughout the website. So if you're looking for something in particular, you might find it at up to like 50% off, maybe even more. For example, Pasta La Pora is available. Excuse me. Okay, next up, 116. I've been looking all over the site. The only thing I saw was a lepto that she mentioned. Uh, is there a glitch? I don't know. Let me check. Uh, like I said, the pasteloporus should be. Oh, and, and that's another thing. Okay, so we looked earlier, and there was a thing where um, it wasn't displaying properly just on the regular category pages. So you actually had to click into the item to see the discount. So like a golden leptosiris, for example, is regular price 55, special price is 20. Um, then if I find a possilopora, or let, maybe a bird's nest, is this discounted? No, it's not. Um, is pink possilopora. Yeah, so like pink pasteloporas, those are like $9. Regular price is 30. So yeah, I don't know why. On like the, on the one view, it just shows 30. But when you click on the actual item, it shows the discounted price. So I wish that wasn't the case, but you have to look around just a little bit more. I'll try to point out the ones that I know that are discounted though. 
So no, well, it is a glitch in one sense, but it's not a glitch in that they are actually there and available. All right, moving on. Uh, what number are we on? 117 now, yellow bird's nest. How to become a patron? Okay, if you wanted to be um, a, a donor to Title Gardens, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash title gardens and you can choose uh, your level of donation. So it could be anything from like starting at a dollar. Um, and th there's like some you know minor perks here and there. For five dollars you get uh, shout outs on both the live show and in future uh, vlogs that I do. I'll definitely give you guys the recognition that you guys deserve. And there's also like a random milestones. So if we get to a hundred dollars in total um, uh, donations, um, I think that I promise to do one of these live shows with absinthe. So I'll get the entire absinthe fountain and everything and we will all see how well that goes. We'll see if somebody else has to finish the show for me. Next up, 118. So you might meet some of the other guys here if they're not also drinking absinthe with me, which is, I don't know. We'll see how that works. You might have to use your imagination on what some of these corals might be. Like the whole thing will be like out of focus or something. Cause let's go to 119. Were you up all night picking out a crap load of corals to sell today? Uh, no. I was up, however, putting them all online and, and putting the, making these overlays and stuff, but the person that picked up the majority of them is Luke and my mom. Next up, 120 is a Panape bird's nest. And I think we're done with this side. So let's take another quick break. I'm gonna go use the restroom again. And um, I think we're gonna swap roles here. So Michael's gonna be handling chat and Luke will be handling the camera. All right, be back. Are your clams aquacultured or maricultured? Uh, they come from ORA. So I think they're, uh, they're hatched and grown in Marshall Islands or something like that and then sent to Florida and then on to me. So, and let's see. I've done absinthe, green fairies and fire. There you go. See, I've never tried it. I'm, I'm genuinely curious and I promise I will get the good stuff. All right, I'll be back. I'm back. It is super windy out there and it's cloudy and it's looking super scary. I think we're finally gonna get that the dinosaur storm. Tristan, I would love to start up my own fish store. Just curious if there's much money in it. Nope, there's really not. Um, if you wanna make money, there's like a million other things you could do. Like, I was like a doing business law stuff um, before doing this full time. I mean, there's like a million ways to make money. I, I, I actively made the decision though that for the rest of my life, I wanna do stuff I actually enjoy. I, I can take the financial hit. Um, so I'm gonna do that and just get by on the fact that I'm pretty much doing what most people would do for fun forever. So all of my hobbies that I have, 
whether it be fitness, whether it be um, photography and videography, even business consulting I am okay with to some degree. Um, obviously the reef aquarium stuff, all of this. All the things, and travel, all of it gets incorporated into money making activities. And that's just kind of how I've kind of modeled my existence. I mean, granted, I mean, I know some people just can't do that. They've got bills to pay. They've got kids. They've got house payments, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I was very fortunate to, to not be in that situation. So I was able to, to, do, to do okay. Uh, do I make lawyer money right now? Not really. But I don't have lawyer stress either. <clears throat> Yeah, let's see. Is there a big market for aquariums in the U.S.? Uh, yeah, I think that the, the global market for um, reef aquariums is like 70% U.S. Um, the exposure is a little bit low. It's a little dark. So I want to be an entrepreneur, just seeing if I can make money bagging fish rather than doing people's taxes. Yes, you can. In fact, I think if you um, looked at how much like Live Aquarium makes, I mean, obviously that's a bad example. It's a gigantic company. They make like a lot of money. I think, I, I don't know, maybe they even have like their, uh, their sales figures estimated um, on like Wikipedia even. So if you're, if you're curious, I think it, it could be, I, I think like Foster's and Smith was like at a, a $250 million a year or something like that. You could make a lot of money if you're, if you're a good enough business person. Uh, next up, 122. It's another orange plating. I think he kind of rolled into the next one, which is 123. I, I don't even mind because I think it, that looks really cool. <laughs> it's a... See that, that cool uh, green and, and orange contrast? So um, speaking of um, people that have done well with entrepreneurship, as well as the University of Michigan, one of my former um, uh, roommates, he uh, started a software company that recently went, um, went public and has now, I think, a market cap of four point something billion dollars. So, congrats to you, John. You made it. You're still not cool as me. No, but seriously, that that's that's really incredible. I mean, the guy's like a legitimate billionaire, and he and like that group started with like, you know, like nothing. They started from scratch, and then they created this company that does like telecommunication stuff, uh, and went you know, in Silicon Valley, made it big. So very very cool. Let's see some OSU grads top that. All right. Uh, next up, 124. <clears throat> so if you're really good at programming computers, there's hope. There's hope. If you're really, really good at fish tanks, there's less hope. <laughs> but it can be done, I guess. It's been done before. Next up, 125. Neon green plating Montipora. Whatever these lights are, I'm really liking it. These look great. Next up, 126. There is a uh, frag swap coming up. Frag swaps, I, I, see, I just kind of assumed that people know what frag swaps are. But I guess it's more popular in like the Midwest than it is in other places. It's basically um, kind of like a really small convention. I mean, Macken is like the, a gigantic convention. You know, people pay like two thousand dollars for a table there. Yada yada yada. A frag swap is like a tiny itty bitty version of that. You might go there, set up a table for like eighty bucks, that sort of thing. Um, but the quality of corals and stuff like that, pretty much on the same level. In fact, a lot of the people at Macna are also going to these little smaller shows. Um, and um, we're there's one coming up for like the Cleveland Saltwater Group, and uh, there's a bunch of people that have posted very very cool um, versions of plating Montipora that we're kind of excited to get. Like there's one that looks like this, but it also has like yellow polyps or something. It's very cool. Okay, next up, one twenty-seven. 
another orange plating. These are very, very fast growing guys too. Next up, 128. It's a blue-green sympodium. The tips of the polyps are green, uh, base is blue. Are you referring to John Waltice of Twilio? Yeah, that's him. That's kind of stalkerish, but that's that's a very good guess. Why do you know him? <laughs> I'd be surprised. I'd be very surprised. I can't imagine he gets out much. Next up, 129. It's a little overexposed. He's looking a little bit bright. I don't see tanks and equipment on your site. Can you recommend a good company to order these things from? Um, assuming that you're in the US, I don't know about tanks. So, uh, tank manufacturers, we get a lot of our stuff from this place called Great Lakes in Michigan. Um, we like their price point. If you're looking for higher quality, there's a place in Canada that makes good stuff called Miracles and good companies in the US that make tanks. Um, like Reef Savvy has a really good reputation, but they're very, very backed up and expensive. Um, so one of my uh, customers here, uh, his name's Will. I've done like a thing on his tank. He's getting like a Reef Savvy, and I think he's waiting like six months or something like that for them to, to build it and deliver it. But supposedly they're very, very nice. Um, Bulk Reef Supply is very good if, you can, if they carry what, you, what you're looking for. Like I met like the guy from Bulk Reef Supply, he's like a nice guy, definitely like their, their site is excellent um, as far as just like purchasing goes. Um, let's go to 130. That's where most people would shop from. Um, Foster's and Smith is good if you're looking for something that's like more, um, uh, like I guess they carry stuff that's like less high end I would call it, which um, is fine. Like I said, I, I, you know what? Amazon's a great place. <laughs> I'm getting like all my super cheap. Uh, T5 fixtures from Amazon. Okay, next up, 131. Some neon green cabbage leathers that we fragged a little while back. We used to have a sister company that did, um, that did dry goods and You'd be surprised at how different the, the whole dry goods world is from the livestock world because I had not very much fun with that company. So it kind of just went to the wayside and we no longer do it. We might reincorporate dry goods. It's a stretch. And by reincorporate, I mean somebody else here is going to have to do that because I don't enjoy it. Next up, 132. It could happen. Luke, do you want to do dry goods? You want to be that guy? Not really. See? Okay, next up, 133. Okay. Uh, your videos are amazing. What lens do you use? This is a Canon 100mm f2.8 L. Image stabilized. Uh, so there's two d uh, different 100 millimeter lenses that Canon makes. One is I think about 400 and something dollars, and there's one that, that we're using that's about a thousand dollars. They are optically super close in quality. Like either one of them will do just fine. Um, this one is slightly better because it's image stabilized. So for video, it has built in um, stabilization to keep the, the, the frame a little bit more. Um, more together. Let's go to 133, which should be a neon green cabbage, or just a regular toadstool. We're on oh, we're, we're, we're on 134? 133 is just that last one right here. Oh, okay. So 133 was this toadstool. Sorry for all the confusion. 134 is next. That's this toadstool. Doesn't help that they're all kind of named the same thing. Uh, next up, 135 is a crown leather. This is actually a lobophytum, so it kind of has these like lobes uh, rather than kind of like the, the classical toadstool shape. Yeah, thanks guys. I'm glad you guys like the, like the vids. Okay, 
Okay, next up, 136. Toadstool leather. So I, I do have a funny story about college as it pertains to uh, former roommate John. So uh, I'm, uh, I, I, was, I spent like the last weekend with my friends up in the Detroit area. Um, Lisa is like, it was her birthday. She uh, is like a pharmaceutical chemist. She's married to one of my best friends, Dave. He's an eye surgeon. And I, I, I remember like uh, going to a, a party with John and meeting like the entire group that eventually became the Twilio group, but they were doing something different around like a uh, like college note taking class. Like a it's like a service that uh, that you subscribe to, and it's like basically somebody goes into your class, takes notes, like cleans them up, and then you basically get like professionally published notes that you just you know instead of you know, having to go and take your own notes, whatever. Um, anyway, so I met this guy, and I swear like. I was like a dumb biology major at the time. Let's go to 137. And uh, I didn't know hardly much about the direction of where the internet was going to go and stuff. This guy sounded like Mark Flippin Zuckerberg or something. He's like, he just saw stuff like way into the future. I'm like, what are you even talking about? He's like saying, oh, you know what? It doesn't matter how much money you make. It all, all depends is the number of eyeballs you get on your site. And if you get big enough, somebody will come along and buy you for millions of dollars. So I'm like, whatever, dude. That guy went on to, uh, to start StubHub.com before starting up Twilio. Like, that guy was super successful. And John was very fortunate to latch on to him. Like, John was like a good programmer. This guy might have been a good programmer, but he was very much a visionary guy. Um, Silicon Valley visionary guy. And, uh, and my friend, uh, the eye surgeon, was saying, do you ever get the impression that we hung around with the wrong people back in college? <laughs> uh, anyway, 138 is a Kenya tree. <clears throat> okay, uh, what is the biggest water change percent on a system you think is safe? 50%. Kenya tree, these guys are still not mad, or still not that happy. Uh, usually they're much more inflated than this, but whatevs, they're $5. Is there any total leather that looks like a crown leather or was the guy from the German coral shop wrong? What? Is there any toadstool leather that looks like a crown leather? Well, I mean, there, there's like a, there's different toadstools that kind of have like folds to them, but a crown leather definitely has more devil's hand characteristics. Somebody was banned, or at least had his comments deleted. Really? Did somebody get banned? Not, not by us. And trust me, we're all over that. We love to ban people. Next up, 139. Okay. Yeah, somebody a long time ago was asking about Xenia. We have a couple pieces here. This is 139 and the next is 140. Okay, next up 141. These are some green star polyps. Nancy Matthews, I dislike Xenia. It's okay, it is okay. Um, believe it or not, so Xenia is like considered like a pest, almost like practically weed. It is also easily our number one seller. It is, it's not even that close. And um, you know, like there, people um, in this industry often kind of gravitate towards like the super high-end exotic stuff. Cause you know, that's, that's what's really, really awesome and interesting. If, if, after you've seen so many corals, you want the rainbow crazy stuff. But there is no question what makes the money, at least here. Like people buy Xenia like crazy. Next up, 42, 142. 
These are the balloon-centered green straw polyps. Uh, yeah, so it's like Xenia, uh, radioactive dragon izoas, eagle izoas. Like the most common things imaginable. That is what people really want. I mean, in, in their heart of hearts, like people are like, I want a, I want a crazy teardrop maxima clam. Sure you do. In the end, thing that gets purchased, it's going to be a Xenia. Next up, 143. There's no real big secrets to keeping stuff like green star polyps, but one thing I did I realize that they, they like a lot of flow. In the times that I did poorly with them, it was always flow related. I throw out Xenia weekly, I'll, I'll send you some. Um, I know some, it depends on your, on your geography, but certain stores will absolutely buy that stuff. Because um, like I said, it's, it's more popular than you might think. Okay, this is 144. These are Rhodactus mushrooms. A lot of different varieties as far as like Rhodactus go. It's probably as far as mushrooms go, the, the most uh, diverse when it comes to their appearance. 145, there's a second one there. Next up, 146. So uh, ceramic man-made rock, you get pillars and finished. So I actually happen to like ceramic a lot as a, as a substrate uh, for like artificial rock. Um, it performs very well. What I mean by that is it's light, it's porous. Uh, coralline algae grows great to it. Corals grow great to it. So all of the frag plugs that you see in our systems here are all ceramic. We're in the, I like how clean it is. I like how, excuse me, it's not very dusty. Um, all of that makes a makes a, a big uh, a big difference as far as I can tell. Let's go to 147. Little purple discosoma. Um, I think the only problem with uh, ceramic is the price. It is very expensive. Um, I've seen certain pieces that look magnificent, and the price is $800, like for aquarium rock. It's it's a, it's a big price tag. Okay, 148. A green discosoma. When you do these sales, are they grouped into compatibility with each other? No, not really. And I don't think that there, there's much to do. Well, okay, so there, there's two ways to look at that. Uh, let's go to 149. Um, there's two ways to look at that. One way is can these things be kept in the same tank? Most things can be. Um, with the exception of like Acropora, which have kind of specialized requirements compared to most other corals, just about everything else can be kept in the same tank. Um, like those, the conditions that a Scalemia survives in and a Xenia survives in, pretty good, pretty close. Um, there's like, there's almost no situations I can, I can think of where like medium flow, medium light won't keep like at least 95% of everything, okay? Uh, so, but if you are like hedging towards uh, Acropora and some of like the really, really, really light demanding stuff, putting something in that doesn't like a lot of light, um, like certain um, like bird's nests don't, for example, that's not going to work. Um, let's go to 150. It's a green striped discosoma. Um, but then the second question is like, or second part of that answer, I should say, is can these things be kept close to one another? And in most cases, I would be very, very, very hesitant to. I would give corals as much space as possible because they do reach out and kill each other occasionally. Um, sometimes in people's tanks, there there's like corals all growing on top of each other. Good for you. <laughs> in my in my systems, they tend to kill each other. Uh, next up, 151. It's a purple discosoma. This is actually a mushroom. It's just kind of like folded straight down over the over the plug. Are you familiar with the tsunami tanks from Fish Tanks Direct? Unfortunately not, I've not heard of that. Uh, reef saver rock epoxy together and sold like that. I wonder if that's what, I'm, what I've heard of before or not. 
Not too familiar. Um, next up, 152. There's a candy stripe discosoma. No. Bay Area Reefs, why didn't you go to Macna? I, I, I was planning on doing it and then uh, I canceled. I just couldn't get up for going to San Diego. Um, I'm sure it's a very nice place. I've been there before. Um, I just I just couldn't get get into it. It's going to be like a thirteen hundred dollar trip for me. And I was like, you know, I just I, I'm just not feeling it. Like, to be perfectly honest, I don't I don't enjoy a lot of trade shows quite as much as other folks. So, I, I mean, at, at most for like a big show that requires a lot of travel, I might only go to one a year, and in this year, I might not go to any. Um, I don't know. It's just not my thing. Next up, 153. However, having said that, there's a very strong likelihood that I'm going to attend the next MACNA that's going to be in New Orleans. Um, like I've, I have a group of friends. They have uh, like a timeshare down there. We always have a good time when we go to New Orleans. Um, so we might make it down there for that. It's, it's, like a, it's, it's definitely more affordable. Uh, I'm much more familiar with the place. Um, so yeah, New Orleans could be very interesting. And as you can tell, it has very little to do with the fact that there's an aquarium conference. <laughs> so, okay, next up, 154. But the official answer is I have a hot date with you guys to do this live show. So, so thank you for not going to Magna and spending it with me. How's that? Next up, 155. And yes, remember, Than is a hermit. I don't get out much, and if I do go out, I want to go to some place really, really exotic, like Thailand or something. And um, for whatever reason, I, I don't know what it is about me, um, but when it comes to, to, to the U.S., I don't get excited about traveling to the U.S. as, as much as I should, because the U.S. Is, like a, is an amazing place to vacation. There's so many interesting places to go. Um, but I don't get really excited about it unless we're talking about Hawaii. Then I'm really excited about it. Go figure. Um, but if, if I'm going to take like the, the time out of my schedule here to, to travel someplace, I want it to be way the heck out there. 156. It's a silver sea fan. It, they're called silver sea fans because uh, the, the polyps, uh, they actually color up more of like a white color under brighter conditions. Um, right now this one is definitely more tan. Is October live sale going to be as fun as last October's? I'm going to try. I'm going to try real hard. <laughs> Chrissy Miller, after having seen a dozen live sales later, finally catch one live. Welcome. All right, next up, 157. Amber Sea Fan. Go to Norway. I'd like to. You know, I haven't been back to Europe since I was in high school. And it is long overdue. Next up, 158. It's gonna be a red fungia plate once we get there. Anybody been to the Maldives? I have not, I kinda wish I could. Um, I was looking at uh, trying to find a way to dive in the Red Sea. I think I mentioned this in the last live show. Um, but there's not a lot of great options. So it looks like that the best options are gonna be um, either Jordan or Israel, um, because all the other places are kinda, kinda worrisome. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, places like that. And uh, unfortunately, Jordan and, and, um, and Israel aren't actually on the Red Sea. They're in the Gulf of Aqaba, which goes into the Red Sea. So yeah, that, that's kind of my, my number one goal to, to dive to. 159. But I'm not going to deal with civil wars to go diving or any kind of uh, caliphate. That's kind of not my thing. So yeah. 
Severe thunderstorm watch until 10 p.m. Summit County. Yeah, I'm looking outside. I can tell. It is just like the, the sky is just ready to explode. I can just tell. Okay, next up, 160. And, and hopefully I'm not being like insensitive to that region because I'm sure that there's like um, people that are really like, uh, I'm in Egypt and it's fine here. You're overreacting. Very possible because um, uh, my, my parents, uh, they went to Colombia and Colombia is on, on one of these, you shouldn't really travel there if you're an American sort of list. They loved it. Um, I like to go to Mexico. Mexico, certain areas of Mexico, you don't really don't want any part of. It, it can be kind of rough, like Sicario rough. So, yeah, but I like to vacation in Mexico. Um, yeah, so it, it all depends. So if somebody's out there in Egypt, it's like, dude, it's fine. Come to, come to Egypt, it's fine. I, I can believe it. Okay, next up, 161. But then again, we do have a family friend that is Egyptian, and he said, it's a little bit rough. You probably shouldn't go right now. So you get a little bit of both, I guess. Just bring a cr crowd of armed security escorts. Eh, maybe, maybe that's what it takes. One of my um, one of my good friends from high school. At one time, he was uh, dating a billionaire heiress from Central America. She was part of some Central American banking family. And when he went and visited her, uh, they literally picked him up from an airport in an armored convoy with like guys with machine guns. And they took him immediately to like another place with like a secret helicopter pad and they flew him out in a helicopter. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, wow, that's interesting. I don't have adventures like that when I go. Next up, 162. That, that friend is like, uh, he's, he's like that Dos Equis guy. He's like the most interesting man in the world. Like the stories that he has are just outrageous. All depends on where you go in Colombia. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me because um, uh, my, so my dad is a professor here at the University of Akron, and he has like this pipeline of uh, postgraduate students from Colombia. So like all of these uh, like PhDs from Colombia come and study in his lab, and uh, they all do really, really, really well. And so they're all like, "Come to Colombia. Like we will hook you up. Come to Colombia." And I'm like, "Yes, I should do this." That's the next up, 163. <clears throat> Does selling coral make good income? It depends on, on your frame of reference. Can you make more money being an investment banker? Yes. Can you make more money being a Starbucks barista? Probably not. Probably not. Can you make more money than minimum wage? Yes. Can you pay your bills if you live in San Francisco? No. Next up, 164. And lastly, 165. They probably say the same thing about visiting Chicago. Okay, I drove through the south side of Chicago once. That place is legit terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Um, if you guys are ever curious from like a, like a sociology point of view just like there's the there's this YouTube channel and I don't know th was, this is fascinating though this guy drives around with like a dash cam in like the in like the most dangerous hoods in America so he goes in like you know he's like driving around at like 2 a.m. in like Detroit and some of these places it really f feels like another world entirely like when he was going through Detroit, there was like all these kids with these like lit up uh, bikes that looks like there's like Christmas tree lights all over these bikes. And you know, there's like, like fights breaking out and like crazy stuff. Like some guy got run over by a car. So this is a green pipe organ, um, like crazy stuff. And I think he just goes to like all these like really, really, really um, you know, just insane areas at all hours of the night. And I'm like, this place is that I just never want to be that late at night. I don't want to be in the south side of Chicago at like 2 a.m. Are you kidding me? Um, but yeah, it, it's just kind of like fascinating to, to see it. It really looks like a different world. Do you have any tips for growing coralline algae the fastest? Um, water, good water chemistry, meaning a lot of calcium, a lot of alkalinity, and believe it or not, not very bright light. Bright light will kill coralline. 
So if you're having a lot of difficulty uh, with Coraline, growing Coraline, um, it could just be too bright. Um, it, the one way you can tell if it's too bright is to like look on the underside of your rocks. Just and sometimes what I've noticed is like in the in the tanks that are too bright, all dead on top, just completely brown, and then but when you flip it over, it's completely purple. And that's what that's what I had going on um, when I had uh, metal halides, for example. Okay, next up, one sixty-eight. What's the care requirements for pipe organs? There's, they don't really have special care requirements. They're pretty um, nonplussed by lighting situations. You do want to make sure that you, uh, you, you provide enough flow, especially around, around their base, because their base collects um, detritus quite frequently. And so you want to make sure that like, that stays clear, otherwise that could kill off the polyps. Um, Yeah. Living in San Francisco, you have to be a millionaire. Two bedroom condo, 1.8 million. Yep. Better start Twilio. Better take that company public. <laughs> then you can live in San Francisco. Actually, that's not true. I'm sure that the, I'm sure that there's like for like a professional salary in San Francisco, it, it pays commensurate. So, but I mean, I wouldn't want to live in San Francisco making less than six figures. Um, and that's just not like first world problems, Than talking. I think it's like one of the most expensive places on earth. Okay, next up, wait, so this is 169, correct? Yep. All right, let's move to 170. These are neon green galaxias. They like to sting stuff, so give them plenty of room. So, okay, uh, Detroit being hell, Saxon, uh, I have friends that live in Detroit, and um, so Suzanne, uh, who's my engineer friend's wife, she went to um, law school at Wayne State, which is pretty much downtown Detroit. Um, and there is something about uh, like downtown Detroit, downtown uh, Cleveland, that is special. They, there are like pockets of like really cool things there. Okay. And, you know, Detroit used to be the richest city on Earth when, it, when you know, they built every car on Earth, essentially. Um, and so there's, like, relics of that wealth there. Having said that, for me to say with a straight face that Detroit is a nice town is outlandish. I mean, that would be... No. Like, the biggest Homer, Detroit Homer on Earth couldn't tell me that unless they literally haven't traveled anywhere else. Because comparing um, Detroit to a city like Singapore, that's like comparing Akron, Ohio to Darfur. I mean, it's, that, that, is, that is that far apart. It's crazy. I mean, I, I don't want to hear about how amazing Detroit is. It's not. It's really, really, really rough. Really rough compared to like a world-class city. And I don't think it's an unfair comparison because Detroit used to be a world-class city. Um, next up, 172. <clears throat> Matt Pinkston, it's 4 a.m. in Singapore. First time seeing live show, amazing, super. See, okay, Matthew, how is your work-life balance in Singapore? I heard that Singa like Singapore has it kind of rough in the way of work-life balance. Like as a tourist, I thought Singapore was the most amazing, magical, dreamland place ever, but Pretty much everybody that I've talked to um, that's like a professional there says it's kind of rough with like, you know, working hours and um, the expectations professionally. They kind of get burnt out and they move away. So I'm kind of curious as to like what your, what your take on that is. Because after going to Singapore, I was like, I could live here for reals. I could just like take off and live in Singapore. It was so impressive. All right. Next up, 173. I did not have that same feeling about Detroit at any point, even when I was enjoying the cool parts of Detroit. All right. Uh, we're on to our ZOA, so I know that some people were, were waiting for these. 
Oops. I misclicked. I am lost. Okay, I'm back. All right, let's go to 174. We're actually coming down to like the last uh, 20 or so, or last 30 or so. But we can just kind of blow through these Zoas and, and Paleothoas. So that's 174 red people eaters. Uh, or, no. These are 174 red people eaters. I need to pay more attention to like <laughs> the actual overlays here. Um, next up, 175. Some Paleothoa grandis. What? Okay. Jeez, why am I so confused? 176 is Purple Death Pallies. Let's go to 176. One seventy seven is also purple death. Okay, one seventy eight. These are red hornets. There was a time when red hornets were shockingly expensive. I think they're like fifty dollars a polyp or something like that. Maybe even more. Where do you get that ridiculously calming music in your videos? I can't find it on iTunes. Uh, you have to go to a site called incompetech.com, I-N-C-O-M-P-E-T-E-C-H.com, and it's a royalty-free music site. In fact, I think you might be able to find it in the description of the video itself, because um, the, the reason why we're able to use that music is that it is royalty-free, and we have to give credit to the, the authoring site. So a lot of people use that site because there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tracks uh, that are available. And actually, I need to spend one day, just pop on the headphones and just like go through and see if there's any new tracks that I can use because I'm kind of using the same tracks over and over and over again. It's kind of getting old. So yeah, but that's, that's, that's a good place to go. Uh, next up, 179. These are blow pop zoas. Uh, how many hours a day do you need to have your lights on for soft corals like Zoas, LPS corals like torches? Um, probably minimum six. I'm all for short photo periods. Next up, 180. Why is it called Purple Death? I don't know. I didn't name it. Um, yeah, that's just the name that stuck. So if you like search for Purple Death in Google, that's what shows up, which is my entire goal with putting names onto any of this stuff. I'm not really big on names, but I am big on Google search. <laughs> so I try to stick with whatever naming convention is out there. Totally true for those looking for money. Totally untrue for people like me. I'm a rehabilitation specialist running my own work, paid for by the hour. Okay, cool. Hey, you know what? If, if, cause, okay. My three favorite places that I vacationed so far, Japan, Korea, Singapore. Okay, if you look at like the happiness index, the number one most unhappy country in the world, Singapore. Number two most unhappy cor uh, country in the world, Korea. Number three most unhappy country in the world, Japan. <laughs> so it's like my favorite places are like the most miserable. These are some mellow yellow zoas, very fast growing. And for, uh, for whatever reason, these guys can suck down food better than the, the, the small polyped zoanthids that you'll see. Hey, look, this saltwater tank is finally able to join. <clears throat> I really like the video you made about sumps. I agree, they do benefit your tank. Yeah, they're, they're my favorite thing ever. Like, just being able to organize stuff and just get it out of the display, get it into its own location, where you can uh, dampen the noise and whatnot. Very important. Okay. Well, it's important to me. Like, noise drives me crazy. Uh, 182. And that's actually one of the reasons why I don't have a, a tank in my house. I don't want to hear it. That and I have all this back here. It's not something that's necessarily missing from my life. Is Stan's mom around? She's here somewhere. What nationality are you? I am Burmese or from Myanmar or Burma, whichever you, you feel. Uh, 183, these are Joker Zoas. Actually, the, uh, we're trying to, to set up a trip to go back to Burma at some point. Um, I am kind of interested to go diving there as well. 184, 
And one Burmese lady that we met in Singapore has kind of, she goes back and forth between Burma and Singapore, and she's uh, in touch with some uh, conservation group that may or may not be government related. And so there might be some, um, some possible meeting with them. I don't know, I'm interested, so. So what good stories did I miss? You didn't miss any good stories. It's just me babbling. Uh, what number are we on? Okay, this is 185. It's closed up. These are orchid zoas. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Let's go to 186. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Uh, 186, these are some Rastas. Probably my favorite zoa right now. Very well known. Okay, next up, 187. Ryan M. Okay. Because I don't know if he's missed me my comments or if they aren't visible. I've just missed them. I'm all over the place right now. 188. These are fiestas. They're kind of closed. They're not happy. Some of these are closed uh, because we have a, a return that's kind of like shooting bubbles. You can kind of see the bubbles like going across. So that can kind of be a little bit troublesome. Is Burma war torn? No, it is not. Uh, next up, 189, Eagle Eyes. Um, it used to be a military dictatorship for about 30 years. Uh, so it was under like the most horrible dictatorships on earth up there with Sudan and North Korea for a long time. But now that they're exacting some democratic reforms, slowly, um, trade has opened back up and foreign investment has flooded into Burma so the real estate values in major cities have gone up tenfold. So Burma is like now a very um, up-and-coming wealthy um, area now. Let's go to 190. A lot of new resorts and hotels popping up all over. So another Eagle Eye Zoa. Did you noob it? Yeah. First one. First one of the day for him. Spot, give me a message when you're in Singapore. You have a friend in this country? Oh, very nice. See, okay, the coolest thing about having a business, not necessarily is the, is the money. Obviously, you want to make money, whatever. The coolest thing about this company is that I have people all over the world that are willing to hang out with me. They've never met me before, but they kind of know me through this channel. And so like I can practically go to any to go to any country on earth if I plan in advance and set up a meetup and there's like any number of people that will meet me out to have a drink or something like that or have dinner or just like to talk reefs or whatever, show me around uh, the country. That is easily the coolest part about having like a, a YouTube presence and a business like this. Okay, one, this is 191, these are Twizzlers. So thank you, Matthew. That's very, very nice of you. And that goes for anybody else that wants to invite me to places. <laughs> I am all about traveling to cool places. Apparently not to Macna right now, but aside from that, San Diego ain't Singapore. I'm sorry. I've been to San Diego. It's very nice. It's not Singapore. Next up, 192, Sakura Zoas. And somebody else was on here earlier from, from Malaysia. It's like, I, I'd like to visit Kuala Lumpur. Um, I would like to visit Jakarta. All these places. Obviously, I want to go to Thailand, go to Burma. 193, let's go to that. These are some Leonardo's. Shockingly, they are open. They were not yesterday, so I'm glad that they're open today. I gave a 300 polyp colony of Rosses to my friend when I took my tank down for free and he crashed his tank. That sucks. Because you could probably have sold that if you were like, judicious with it for like a house payment. <laughs> Next up, 194. Uh... Okay, so 28 watt T5 and for an SPS tank, a single thing. 54 watt, a single 54 watt, probably not. Um, but it depends on which ones. There's certain 
SPS that are actually kind of low light. Um, it's you won't be able to keep like the higher light corals, obviously, but some SPS, yes. Let's go to 195. These are some Fiji rainbows. You're on Than. Come to Iowa. I'll buy your beer. Oh, thank you very much, Bruce. Actually, I hear very good things about Iowa. I have never been. Come to Newport Beach. Where is Newport Beach? What state? Newport Beach. Is it California? It sounds so familiar. I've heard it like a million times. I just don't know where that is. 196. These are a second thing of Fiji rainbows. Okay, moving on, 197. These are Vampire and Drag. These guys honestly look a little bit different in person. The, the, that uh, cobalt-ish color. Yeah, see, okay, so under the flashlight, it looks a lot more, more true to color. Because it has like this weird iridescence to it, which makes this kind of special. Newport Beach, Virginia. That makes sense. There's also Newport in Rhode Island. But I don't go there. Is it like south side of Chicago or Detroit or East St. Louis or all of Baltimore? <laughs> okay, next up, 198. Uh, then I just lost all my Maryland customers right there. No, I've never been. I, I don't know if I've been to Baltimore or not, but um, I suppose at some point I should see the Baltimore Aquarium. Fire and ice sellers. Oh, I want to go to the Georgia Aquarium, but only if I can dive in their tank, which you can do, but I want to take my own camera, which they might not allow. They might want to like charge me $100 or something like that for their video of the event. I don't know. But if they allow me to shoot my own video in the whale shark tank, I might make a stop in Atlanta to check out the aquarium there. All of Baltimore. <laughs> Ever been to Texas? I've only driven through the northern little square of it. 199. I drove through that square on my way to Pasadena, California to watch the Michigan Wolverines win the Rose Bowl in 1997. I'm a diver at the National Aquarium. Cause to sin. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I'm making fun of, of your town. There's like this beef between like uh, Baltimore and Cleveland because of the whole Browns moving thing. Okay, let's go to 200. We're coming up to the end, you guys. I feel like we're just getting started. You know, at some point, I need to have a setup where we can just do like an all day live show where people can just come in, go out, come in, go out for like eight hours. And I'll have like a rotating, uh, rotating roster of people to, do, to operate the camera so they can all just leave at different times. Yeah, it's not all that great, nah. Okay, next up, 201. These are Bowsers, I think. I think these are Bowsers. Hopefully they are, because they're kind of priced like they're Bowsers. I want to go to the Great Barrier Reef and dive all day. Yeah, me too. But I heard it's kind of struggling. Are we going to go see the Akron Zips in the Rose Bowl this year? Uh, I doubt that. <laughs> I doubt that very much. 202. I don't know. I don't even know if the University of Akron is good at football. I remember for a couple years they were like cellar dwelling. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I misclicked. So 203, it's like, is that a gigantic Aptasia? It's not. It, they're yellow polyps. Okay. And just a reminder, I know that, like, uh, it's difficult to, to see. <laughs> you have to take my word for it. But there are items on the website that are heavily discounted um, as a flash sale price. And they are, um, <clears throat> like, they're as cheap as like $9. Uh, unfortunately, if you just like uh, look at the entire page of corals, 
for whatever reason, the discounted prices do not show up. So you have to actually click on the coral. So if you are interested in a particular coral, just click on it just to check to see if it's, if it's one of the ones that are heavily discounted. I can give you a quick hint as to what some of those might be since we're kind of coming towards the end here. Um, so there's some inexpensive Xenia, um, Kenya trees, some Acropora, so check out on that, some Pasilopora, uh, some Plating Montiporas, Leptocyrus, Pavona, stuff like that. So uh, feel free to check on that if you like. Okay, next up, 204. These are some Jack Frost pallies. Have you tried, uh, Jacob Mendoza, have, Dan, have you tried propagating flower pots? And if so, how did it go? Uh, it depends so much on the species. Some of them propagate very, very, very well. Others die if you look at them wrong. So the ones that we have here called Harlequin, um, Ganeopora, they have been propagated many times. Uh, next up, 205. Okay. Any plans going global with Tidal Gardens? Um, Europe needs more retailers like you. Oh, thank you very much. Um, not anytime soon, but I anything is possible. Anything is possible. Uh, next up, 206. Okay, so. I haven't been to Europe since I was like 16, so it might it might take a, like at least a couple of visits. Okay, and the last item are just our standard Asterina snail packs, uh, 30 of them for $20. Okay, um, that pretty much does it for the live sale. Andrew K, they're very bad at football. That does not surprise me. They are not paying their players enough. That's the problem. Okay, so real quick, thanks again to the Patreon crowd, Jeff, Louise, Nate, Phil, and uh, first time donor, Jason. Thank you so much. Again, if you guys wanted to know a little bit more about Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash title gardens. Um, it, it's, uh, it's basically a donation site. If you wanted to, to like throw a couple dollars my way, um, feel free to do so there. I appreciate it. Um, you can pledge as little as like a dollar and there, there's some, some random perks and if we hit certain milestones we do goofy stuff like I said um, the first milestone at $100 is to do one of these live shows um, with some absinthe for myself and the crew which I'm sure will get will get very interesting very quickly because I don't usually drink very much let alone stuff like absinthe so anyways, thank you guys so much for, for joining me. Um, I hope to do uh, more uh, raw vlog type stuff. So I'm just hoping to get more content out more frequently. I think that that's like the, the moral of that story. Next live sale is going to be October 1st. And then the next live sale after that is going to be the Halloween special. So my goal with the whole live sale thing is to do basically one a month or thereabouts plus special events. However, the only special event that we do one for is Halloween. So um, maybe we can find some other, uh, some other interesting themes, but Halloween is like my favorite holiday ever. And so I have to top, um, top last time, which was a very, very good time. So anyways, thank you guys again, and um, I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.